Hey guys, Wordy Nerd here, back with another video. Today, I will tell you everything you need to know about LEGO pneumatics. Let's get started. For starters, let's talk about what pneumatics actually is. Pneumatics is a concept of using air to push pistons, like the one shown here. These pistons can convert rotary motion to linear motion by either a manual or pre-pumped compressor. And you can use a motor to use a compressor, which can also extend and retract the piston, allowing for linear motion. The best part about pistons is that they can provide linear motions at angles because they only have one stud at the end, making it very easy to make arms and other lifts. Let's get started with what the basis, the compressors. These are the two main kinds of compressors that LEGO makes. As you can see, one is drastically larger than the other. The smaller one is used for motors because it has no spring and is very easy to retract. You can find many mocks or my own creations of YouTubers and other creators making huge compressor assemblies, allowing for so much air to be pushed into a system. This is a larger and manual compressor. As you can see, it has a spring on it, allowing it to retract. The spring also makes it very hard to push, so it might not be suitable for motorized compressors. It also is very much larger, and it is used to store air in an air tank, which is very good for FLL because you don't need it to spare a motor port, so you can run your compressor assembly. Unlike pistons, compressors only have one output valve. They are intended to only be pumped in and never to be used as a piston. These are essentially the motors that run your system, although you will have to use either motors or manual to run the pneumatic system. Now let's talk about the transporters of the system, the tubes. The tubes are very thin, and I don't know if you can see this on camera, but there's a small opening in the middle. Essentially, these tubes are made so you can just plug them into pistons and compressors, and they will connect. They are extremely user-friendly, and since they are so user-friendly, to modify their length, you can simply cut them. As you can see, you can just press the tubes into compressors and pistons, and they will connect, transporting your air into your system. There are three main types of tubes, the black ones, the gray ones, and blue ones, which I don't have shown here. Although there are certain color patterns you might want to follow if you are making my own creations, I am not, and for FLO, you really only need one color. It depends what length you need, but on many different websites, they sell different lengths and different colors. You can cut them with a pair of scissors to whatever size you want. They're also fairly cheap, so if you mess up cutting them once, don't fret. You can just use another pair. Now let's look at the controller of the system, the valve. A valve has one input port in the middle and two output ports on the side. There, it also has a black axle on top and two pinholes to connect to your assembly. If the black axle is in the middle position, it will close both output valves, allowing no air to go to the rest of the system. If you switch it to the left, it will open the right valve. And if you switch it to the right, it will open the left valve. Whichever way you switch it, it will always open the opposite valve. In most manual assemblies, the valve is the part that you will be running. Let's have a look at how you can run a valve using a worm gear drive. If you are interested to find out how to build this assembly, make sure you check my website, which will be constantly updated. And soon I will be adding a new page on instructions, which in the first thing that might be on this website is how to build this valve assembly. Website link is in the description. Now let's look at the final destination of our air, the pistons. The pistons are the parts that move in the pneumatic system. As you can see, they consist of a rod inside a plastic container that can move forward and backward. A piston has two input valves. One of them is at the bottom. When air is pumped into this valve, it will make the piston rod extend. When air is pumped into the top valve, it will make the piston rod retract. Keep in mind that a piston is not to be used as a compressor, and a compressor is not to be used as a piston. The small piston has very little power, but it is thin and good for small joints. This large and thick piston is very good for huge powered machines that need to extend very far. This is good for machines that need a lot of power, but only need to extend a little bit. 
And this is good for large joints that don't need that much power. Each piston takes a certain amount of air based on how big it is. The biggest piston will use up the most air from your system. The smallest piston will use up the least. Now let's have a look at the specialty members of the pneumatic system, the pressure gauge and the air tank. The air tank is very useful in FLL because as you can see, it is essentially a big tank of air. And if you close it off with a valve, it is very good for FLL because in a manual system, you only need to have the motor turn the valve and not the compressor. If you have the motor turn the compressor, then that's wasting another motor on your robot, which you don't want. Then we have the air gauge. The air gauge is very good for telling how much pressure is in your system. So if you're using a, either a manual or a motorized system, you can use it as a lab experiment, or you can use it to tell how much air is in your system. That way you don't pump too much or too little. Now let's see this all come together in two big pneumatic systems one representing a manual system and the other representing a motorized compressor system. Lego has made two versions of pneumatics, one a version one and one a version two. There's not much difference between version one and version two, except for the outlets. As you can see, there's not a huge difference in the length of the outlet, but rather the shape. One is just a perfect cylinder, while the other has a little groove right here. Part of it is cut off, that means it's a lot easier to insert tubes, but it's also a lot easier for tubes to fall out. Overall, I would recommend version two because it is easier to use than version one, but not by that much. Version one is also still great and I use it a lot in FLL. Here I have built a simple assembly with a motorized compressor. Let's see how this works starting from the compressor to the valve, to the air tank, to the air gauge, to the piston. Let's get started. Here is the compressor unit. As you can see, I use this oval piece right here so that my compressor can run based on my motor. This valve goes to the, mo the air tank right here, which leads to both the air gauge and the valve. The valve right here can be changed so that the rod extends and retracts. As you can see, I have a PSI monitor, PSI being pounds per square inch, and this is giving me a reading of about 12 pounds per square inch. There are also micro leaks, which will mean that the pneumatic system will lose a little bit of air pressure over time. But that's okay with the manual system, which I will show you now. As you can see, I've changed the original design. Now, instead of a motorized compressor, I have made a manual compressor, but a motorized valve. This is a setup I would recommend for FLL because you can keep air pumped in the air tank. That way, when you run the robot, you don't have to waste two motors moving the air and having to control the valve. Let's see how it works from the compressor to the piston. First, we'll start with our manual compressor. As you can see from the pressure gauge, when I pump the manual compressor, it pumps up a lot faster than the smaller one. That is because of the size of the compressor. Now we can look at our motorized valve. As you can see, when the valve turned, it extended. Now, we can go back to the original position and it will go back and retract itself. All the pressure is stored in the air tank. This is an example of the pneumatic type system I would use for FLL, because in FLL, you ha only have so many motors and you usually need one for another task. So taking up two motors to complete one task with a pneumatic system is just silly and unnecessary. So what you can do is you can pre-pump it, which will save a lot of time, and then you can use a motorized valve so to only spend one motor to control the entire pneumatic system. A benefit of using pneumatics is not can you only make a straightforward linear motion, but you can also do it at angles, unlike lin most linear actuator pieces. Thank you for watching this week's video, and I hope you learned something. If you want to look for more FLL content and other things, check out my website, which I'll post a link in the description. Thank you for watching this week's video, and make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to never miss another video. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.